This is a brief walkthrough on one of the available features on forest bandsaws regarding a uh, table drive system. Our larger saws, both vertical and horizontal, have available as an option a variable speed powered table drive system. Most of our machines, we used a tooth timing belt as a drive element. It has some advantages, relatively low cost. We can make them very long. So I just did a machine with 156 inch table travel and uh, they are relatively insensitive to dust and alignment issues. So bandsaws make dust, so that's obviously a problem. And people occasionally back fork trucks into my machines, which causes alignment problems. So they're very tolerant of all that. But for very heavy loads or very fussy loads, they can have problems. If you have a very heavy load on a very long belt, it can start to get a little springy. Um, or for very precise speed control of loads, they can be not ideal. So the upgrade is to go with a rack and pinion table drive mechanism. The saw I've got to illustrate that today is a variant of a model 480P horizontal blade drive with table bandsaw. The 480P comes with a lot of tables. You can do a fixed table where you slide the workpiece across the table. You can do a manual traverse or hand pushed traveling table, or you can do a powered traveling table. This is the latter. It has quite a few interesting options on this machine, but we're gonna focus on the table drive system right now for this video. So the driving element shown here, we've got a AC inverter duty motor Going through a speed reducer gearbox. It then drives a sprocket, and I can adjust the ratio of the sprockets to adjust my maximum machine speed. Then the sprocket shares a shaft with a pinion gear. And the pinion gear, oh, too much zoom, tracks on the rack. So the motor and the pinion gear are traveling with the table. The gear rack is fixed to one of the table drive rails. The advantage of the situation is I can run a table very long distances. The, the table travel here is longer than the total length of the table. If I do the opposite configuration, if I have the gear rack attached to the table and the, get in the pinion gear and motor fixed to the saw head, then I can only travel the table at most the length of the table itself, and in reality a bit less. So this gives me the opportunity to set up the table, and I have the table start well in front of the blade, and at the end of the cut, it finishes with the back trailing edge of the table well clear of the blade on the other side. Uh, to make sure it's a nice clean movement, we use everybody's favorite recirculating ball, ball bearing pillow blocks running on a round rail. I can use either recirculating ball type bushings or I can use a slider type that has a Teflon impregnated ceramic material instead of the ball bushings. The Teflon impregnated ceramic is nice because it's impervious to material, dust, oil, grease, whatever. Um, they're about the same price and they're dimensionally interchangeable with these blocks. These blocks, however, have a coefficient of friction roughly one-tenth of the sliding type blocks, but they're a little fussier to environment. They are, they are sealed with wipers and everything to keep them clean, but they're still gonna die younger than a sliding pipe element would. Um, one of the problems on a machine this size, so this machine has, I think it's a 10 foot travel, working off memory here, five foot wide. So when you're using linear bearings, I would say we have four bearings for the table total, two on either side. There, it gets to be a, uh, mechanics nightmare to get everything lined up and positioned precisely. So these things don't 
tolerate much misalignment at all. So if the two rails were not dead parallel, that could cause me trouble. Or I can be a little sneaky. So here on what we're calling the guide rail, the linear bearings are bolted directly to this cross member. On the opposite side, which is hidden under the table right now, they are mounted on sliding plates. They are, uh, have a little bit of Delrin plastic. They're sandwiched, the mounting plates are sandwiched in Delrin plastic, giving just a little bit of move uh, from this perspective left and right, but nothing vertical. That makes this a fixed guiding rail and the opposite rail a floating rail. Just a little bit, like a plus or minus an eighth of an inch, but just enough that if there is any misalignment between the two rails, it's not going to kill us. So all the driving and guiding is here on the left and the right side basically serves a support function. So when we ship a machine like this, we're going to ship the table and rails as an assembly. We'll pull it off the saw, but it'll all ship as assembly. So that's a big skid to ship. But that way the machine owners, when they get their machine to set it up, aren't starting from scratch and getting everything aligned. The table motion is controlled at both ends with mechanical arm limit switches. It's a, a little bit on the primitive side, but it's uh, dead reliable. You understand how it works. The machine control cabinet here, control panel face, gives you saw start, saw stop. This machine has pneumatic blade tensioning. So you have a tension detension switch. You have indicators for a motor fault, either table drive motor or blade drive motor. The table forward and reverse buttons, those uh, intermittent buttons give maintain operation, table stop. And we have separate potentiometers to control the table forward and return speeds. The table drive is controlled with a variable frequency drive where we can control the acceleration and deceleration profiles of the speed. We have it set for a maximum speed right now of three inches per second at 60 hertz based on the reduction. I'm probably gonna shift this a little slower, probably gonna ship it at a uh, two inch per second max speed at 60 hertz and then you can control the hertz down to like one hertz, one and a half hertz. So you get something like a 50 to one speed ratio on that. You can overspeed the motor, but that brings complications. The inverter is nice and simple and inexpensive, but it allows you to control the acceleration deceleration profile um, so when I, the table hits the strip switch, it begins decelerating. And whether you're going faster or slower, it takes a greater or shorter distance to decelerate. I've got this machine set up so the table always stops clear of the blade, either uh, preparing for cut or after a cut. And we'll do a follow-up video on this machine for some test cutting. Uh, another nice feature of this machine, the tabletop is half inch thick aluminum plate. We've got two leaves, we screw them down to the table surface. We've got one leaf off right now just so I can illustrate all the parts. But the next step we will go ahead and um, assemble this machine, put the table on and do some test cutting for you. But that's the basics on the mechanism for the gear rack drive in contrast to our tooth timing belt drive. If you have any questions, please feel free to call or email us at Forest Manufacturing. Thank you.